All right, welcome. And I would like to show you how to use the fo footprint widget in version six of KiCad. I will be doing this with an example, the RP2040, which is uh, a new microcontroller by Raspberry Pi. Um, this video will be uh, made up out of these chapters. If you just want to see how it is done, you can skip to the example but the extra explanation might be nice for beginners and in the end i will round up with some question for you and some uh, a roadmap for the future of this channel so for the situation in your design you will need a new part and of this new part you have uh, its data sheet and of course you will know if it's a new footprint uh, or if it's not, uh, if it's new, then you will need to decide if it's uh, unique and um, with unique meaning it's uh, unique dimensions or um, if it's uh, a breadboard of a development board or something. And if it's not unique, then it's one of the footprints KiCad can generate for you with its wizard. That is what we will take a look at. And to come here, you will open the editor, create either a new library or use an existing one, then generate the, the package, fill in the dimensions, export it, and then finish it up. So the content of this um, preparation and the example will be made up of the same steps. So. You will need the data sheet, of course, and in this you will find the package name. This is what decides which option, uh, excuse me, which option you choose in the uh, wizard, the QFN in this case, uh, the table with its dimensions. You need it. Uh, this is uh, a giveaway for you to see um, if you actually need uh, the generator or you can use an existing one. In this case, it's not a standard size, so you will need uh, to make your own footprint. And here are the dimensions of the footprint. So note that there are dimensions from the footprint and the package, which are two different things. The footprint is actually within the PCB, while the package is the packaging of the chip itself. So that's the black box or the black piece of plastic. And finally, you will have uh, the numbering of the chip. This is to check if you uh, kick it, lace it, does the numbering right. So to actually get to generating the footprints in this example, first, um, I will show you in this example that um, how to get there and I already opened a product project and only make this library for this project so it doesn't interfere with the rest and that's easy for when you have a unique chip and then I chose the QFN which we got from the data sheet uh, All right, then we can see in the left column what kind of data we need. And they're quite understandable, except the offset, which is actually the, the distance between the outer edge of a pad and the edge of the package. I added a little um, clarification here. This is 3 .7, uh, 0.375 and i got that from the calculation from the footprint size minus the package size so that's 7.75 minus 7 uh, divided by 2 and then you get this number i will show you and in the next uh, window 
we get uh, to choose the earth pet or ground pet um, if we need it and we do we can set its size uh, choose thermal fires i won't go into them this in this video we can do that in a, uh, a video with uh, thermal uh, properties as subject and choose their size and amount and of course the more important one the solder paste margin um, so for when you um, reflow these chips you will need the solder paste and i made a calculation for this you can use this the length of the pad itself so it is this dimension divided by two and then the rest and the percentage is actually how much of the uh, area of the um, pad you want to be have covered with uh, paste i just usually use 70 and the two actually get from the these divisions so if you have more here then you will need to change this too uh, so to fill it in the numbers are obvious we got them from the description here uh, sorry we got them from here we have the pitch which is the distance between the pads or from the center of the pads the size of the pad itself uh, the length from here to here and the offset like i said it's this 7.75 minus 7 uh, 7 is the size of the package so then we have like um, uh, yes and now we just need to divide it by two that's what we get and we always use oval because it's easier to solder and the ground pad its dimensions are given as well and the last one the package these are also found in the table for e and d say the dimensions and its margin i just leave that as it is currently because it works quite well but for smaller uh, packages you would use a smaller margin so then you can export it to see uh, the actual result here we uh, see it we can see the pin one marking in the upper left corner because the silk screen is different from all the other and the margin around it and the yellow line is the actual footprint of the, or the actual packaging and okay and here's the 3d model so you can check your paste margin and all the other properties here um we're not done yet that's uh, why we get to set its properties now in the uh, footprint editor itself there is uh, not so much you can you choose the footprint name i changed this uh, from the default to uh, one that includes the actual chips name because it's unique to it and just some general description and keywords to make it easier to find important is that you set the correct uh, component type so that's important for when you are looking at 3d models of or the, of the PCB and want to exclude or include certain things and finally the actual 3d model uh, to add one you click on this folder here and Kaika should open in its directory with all the 3d models if not I have the path here and I chose this QFN step file because the, the pins are right and it, is a, it has an earth pad and uh, there are two options so I just chose the one with the smallest pad in the middle and here we can see the result everything lines up very nice all the pads are correct the, the packaging is within the silk screen so it looks all good then you can save it and you are practically done for those who want to know more about me or the it is that i am 
currently developing or setting up a platform to learn more about KiCat. It's learnkiCat.com. And to make this as good as possible, I of course need your help uh, with feedback. So I will add a form by which you can add uh, three things you like from this video and three things you think could be improved. And you're very welcome to say anything you want. And my plan for this platform is to host free content like blogs, videos, and maybe some collaboration or other content and to actually make it um, well, more professional or to be um, able to make it more professional, I will need to uh, have some paid content as well. And these will be in the form of full courses on Udemy and maybe something like Patreon. I haven't figured that out yet, so your tips are welcome as well. And a uh, look at the future is below. Those are the subjects I wish to include in future videos, emails, uh, blogs. Uh, always working with Calcat 6 because that's the one coming out soon. And if you have some requests about things you want to um, know more about, you can send it to me, of course. And I always love to hear it from you. So to round up, I want to look at some bloopers I made uh, during the making of this uh, the paste margin in this case it's those four little dots way too small it doesn't work um, after this I look at what's wrong and I corrected it and actually found some uh, official guidelines for or inspiration uh, on how to actually choose how big they need to be so I will share that resource with you and then a final one is using models from the internet, uh, not from KiCat, but from Ultra Librarian. And as it turns out, the pets of the package don't line up with the pets of the footprint. It's most extreme here and here. Uh, so for me, this is a reason to always make my footprints myself and uh, choose packages well to just look at the 3D model and see if it's all correct and to choose your sources of files wisely and because if it goes wrong here you won't get it right the first time um, that would be a shame and that is also why I'm making these videos in order to help you prevent from making mistakes like this so I hope you uh, enjoyed this and uh, if so be sure to fill out the feedback form and uh, I'm sure you will hear from me soon again.